Well, today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I've got a beautiful photograph here of a lovely ship, a little, little fishing boat. I think this is probably in the Highlands in Scotland. But I've got this lovely colour. I mean, who could not resist that? But I've got a few challenges there. I've got the reflections to do, but also the hills in the background. So I've got to get the, uh, what they call aerial perspective or atmosphere. Um, so they're going to be a lot paler in the distance and the foreground one's a bit darker, a bit more intense in colour uh, in order to push them back. If I don't get that right, there won't be any depth. So we don't have a lot of green in this scene, which makes a change from the paintings that I've been doing recently. But we have got this promontory here, this hillside of green. So we'll get that. Uh, but we've got lots of uh, paraphernalia on the boat, but I will simplify some of it. But we'll try and uh, capture the atmosphere. So let's press on with that. Um, I'm going to use, well I've got a choice of uh, different reds to get that hull, but I think it's cadmium red and um, we maybe drop some crimson alizarin in for the uh, darker areas. But I'm going to start um, with something quite striking actually. The, the red, I think we should go for that right away actually, uh, something to focus on and uh, inspire us to uh, press on. So I've got a nice cadmium red now. I need a little test paper, see whether I've got the right red. Mm, looks a bit orangey that one. Um, let's put a bit of um, crimson alizarin with it and see if I can brighten it up a little bit. Yes, I think this, this should do. Um, so let's have a crack at it. You see I've sketched it out my rough sketch anyway to you've got to start with a decent drawing actually I think for most things really if there's something a bit more precise like this um, so we've got to get that in this is just the the red elements there's different tonal values which we can drop in as we go so we get all the rust well no, this is pretty well maintained actually I can't say there's rust but lots of stains and things on it and I'll come right down to the whole area here so I want to get a little darker there, so I'm going to put a little bit of ultramarine and darken that, that red a bit. So we've got some sense of, of the uh, shape of the hull, or the curve of it really. Now let's just get that in. Fade out some of the shadow. There. And the bottom here is, is much darker. We'll drop that in in a minute with some ultra um, Payne's Grey, I think we can get 
get in there it's pretty black in here run that down let them blend a little bit using a Chinese brush calligraphy watercolor lying on the mud the tide is out so we'll leave, leave that for the moment um, I've got the key side to get in as well so I'm going to vary the colors so we can get some thing of the key here the big heavy blocks of stone and we'll sweep this in and just above there I want to have some light tone because the sun is is shining um, left no I think it's coming from the right side actually it's coming from here but this top above the key there is catching a lot of sun so we'll go to get that in and we've got the similar tone here where it's moored up against this key that's quite in the shadow there and we can step up the the darkness when it's drier perhaps and here that little bar in the middle of light is uh, the sunshine is catching there this is all in shadow area here that's why I've left the lights there right and let's go back to the get a darker color because I need to get in this part of the hull there's the anchor there as well we'll leave a little bit of light there we'll pick that out with a fine brush a bit later but let's just get the basic shapes in really this one I'm doing is concentrating on the shape rather than the object as it were that's a good idea sometimes you have to paint what you see rather than what you think you know or you imagine is there because you you tend to paint a bit generically then if you do if you're not careful so try and simplify it I think I'll probably darken up on some of this with the, when it's dried little holes here in the gunnels here this allows the water to rush run off the deck I guess that's the plan um, and this is much much darker here in the shadows of the key there and these are quite dark actually it's darkening it up a little bit right let's 
go with that. A shadow area is coming out here. Um, and let's go back to that red. So I've got to do this bit of the hole down here. It's quite bright, so I can use there. Get a bit of a difference between this and this. Right. And it gets dark to the bottom, of course. You know, on the key side, there's all sorts of paraphernalia as you get on a key um, right um, to this black is further up on the hole there got that up enough. Go with that. This comes down into this little square of black. Right. Um, Shadow is more in that kind of shape there. Um, let's get a bit of that key in. Let's put a bit of um, raw sienna, I think. It's sort of a yellow here, a little. some light anyway. I want to make sure I've got some contrasts all important in watercolour and along here is catching the sun sunlight as well. So let's, let's get some of that. Um, Yes, yeah, all along here is the sun on this bit of the key. Okay, I might catch some of it there. Right, let's go with that. And I've got such a lot of. Um, white here. Um, I need to really deal with that. Um, now how do we deal with that? I think I should get some reflection of the sky in. And then I can drop in the darker colours of the reflection of the boat. So let's get um, some uh, sky or some mark the water in, but it's really reflecting the sky, which is quite a nice blue actually, a um, cerulean. Any cool, I don't think it's ultramarine bright. Let's just uh, let's just put some in here. some in the water here. And 
that comes sort of out to here. Um, and then I've got my shadow in here, which is reflecting something of that red. But it's a more muted colour. Says it's a reflection, so I've got sort of wet on wet here. It's bleeding in, which is quite good because it gives me a soft, a soft edge, which I want for most of it. I think it needs to be a bit darker, so I'm going to put some umber in with that. And then, so the, the wheelhouse is reflected here, so I'm going to go with that. Yes, it's to darken up on our Reflections. It comes out here a little bit more. It's this shape, really. Right, let's, let's leave that for a moment. And also we could soften up these reflections a bit. That's a little bit darker on the base of the key there. And this is much darker as well. So let's get a much darker here to set a contrast to the key on the hull there. Right, that comes out still darker needed here. And there as well. Right. Now let's think. Um, I think I want to bring this down a bit, this dark bit of the steel here. I haven't quite got the shape right. So we can go up here with a dryer mix a bit later. Um, now let's get some thing in here. Let's see bits of seaweed and various forms here. So I'm going to drop this in, get some odd hint of green. We have greens along here. Anything into 
suggests the randomness of the, the foreshore here. Just a simple wash. I can drop in with a dry mix something a bit different. But I need to give a little bit of a shadow in here too. This is um, a little bit too light blue so I'm going to get a bit of ultramarine here mix it with a, a few odds and ends on the palette that's better need to dull down that's it now the more like it right now let's have a look um, perhaps I should uh, actually well I'm still here with a green just drop a few into this this green that we've got here little bits of weed let's change the colors let it all bleed in make these shapes a bit bigger nearer us Um, right, let's leave that for a moment. Um, well, I'm going to use, I'm going to put a bit of green along that edge of my reflection. Seem to be there. So let's get some of the um, some of the hillside in. I think I need to do that. Just use a bit of wet on wet while it's bleeding in. This is useful. Right. Okay. Clean off my brush and. Get some blue into this sky. Going to try and do some nice cloud area there as well. Right. Okay, I'm not going to fiddle too much with that. Um, although, let's bring it down to the hillside. It will help delineate the hill. Right. Okay, I'm going to leave that. Now, I need to a muted color for this part of the hillside it's in the distance so it's got to be a little on the pale side um, it's really yes it's got little bits of raw sienna very, very, very faint. So I want to send it back. That's it. And we can put different colours in. But just got to get that form in. And this main one sort of a light tone. Bring him back and comes behind the wheelhouse here. Uh, 
and this bit as well. There's a bit of sunshine on it, so it's a little bit of warmth in that, which I'm trying to emphasize. And then here, um, actually let me run that to meet there, that hillside. This one here, I'm going to have um, a mixture of greens. So I'm going to get some hooker's green mixed with some yellow ochre to give me something a little darker so I can dab it in. This is being more colour in this. This will bring it closer, which it was, of course. This is my my point. I've got to push the other hillside back by having this green coming here up in the hillside there. comes down, I must leave a gap for the sea, the water, I've got to get the sea in. Um, on this far hillside though, I can put a little darker, it's getting shadows, and the clouds scudding over, so I'll do that. And even this one has some suggestion of that. I must keep it very faint. And here I'm going to go with a bluey, bluish colour. Um, A little bit of raw sienna, a little bit of blue, and it's bluey green. Yes, that's not so bad. Let's give it a smidge more blue to exaggerate it somewhat. difficult sometimes, or a mistake actually, to try and chase the photograph, to try and reproduce the photograph, because photographs do lie, strangely enough. They don't always tell the, the full picture. Right. And this blue in there, this hillside coming out here as well, behind the wheelhouse, and on that far hill we've got some shadows as well, scudding across the hillside, reflections. should get a, a sort of pale, a very pale blue in there, so we can get our, our lock. 
water in in situ so let's have something yes that's that'll do it the lock here behind all these dock railings you can see there let's go with that hmm. now um, I think I'm tempted to fiddle a little bit more with the hillside but I've got to resist it because you only get so many chances with uh, watercolour in an attempt to fix things sometimes you make it worse so you've got to go with what you get sometimes and as they say watercolour has a, a sort of will of its own sometimes so rather than being overcome with that you should just embrace it and make the mess the best of it so in that spirit I'm going to do that I think I'm going to See if I can brighten this this red up to a more vivid colour. Um, but let's think. Now I need to get in the um, the wheelhouse. So let's. I think I should get a smaller brush. And so I've got more control. brushes here to choose from. I've got this one. Oh, I'm not sure. Number nine, flat, long flat, this one. So I think I'm going to maybe give that one a whirl so we can get something of this wheelhouse in. Make it wood-like. So I've got some umber here. Let's get that upper structure. I can use a little bit of dry brush effect. You know, not having too much water on it. So it might preserve some of the texture of the paper to help me capture some of the highlights of it. They're all weathered wood. Right, we've got that. And we've got on the side of the wheelhouse, it will be a little darker. You say it's in the shaded side. So let's go with that. This upper section, anyway. Let's try and leave some hint of the, the wheelhouse windows. Right, let's go with that. Bring the wood down a little bit. Uh, we also have a shadowed area here or some little structure, I'm not quite sure what it is. Um, right, and okay, back here 
I've sketched in a little dark form to remind me it needs to be darker. Right. Now I could do, um, let's get some of the, oh, there's a little bit of a door there actually. And let's bring it down. some of that deck in on the front here give some solidity there right and the front of the house there the wheelhouse it's quite a it's a yellowy so I'm going to use a little bit of Naples yellow, which is very pale. It will give us a nice colour, I think. Yes, we'll go with that. And slightly darker on that shadowed side. I'm going to do that. Right. Okay. Leave it like that. Okay. Um, well, I've got this little brush. Try and introduce some of the little stones and texture that I've got here. So I can probably do a bit of splattering here. Gonna... No, I haven't got enough on that brush for that moment. So we're gonna dab it in. All sorts of colors, stones. some flecks of white in at some stage I think. I can do a get a more suitable brush for my splattering. Need one with a stiffer bristles and like an old toothbrush or something. If you can spring the little brush little bristles will give you a shower of splattered paint. Um, now, let's think. Um, we've got lots of paraphernalia on this boat, so I'm going to have to get that in somehow with um, a very fine, I might do it with pen actually. Mm, let's get the mast in anyway. Let's do that with, uh, I've got this brush here, the number four round. That's a nice one, Aquafine. So that one also will give some ochre to that mast, I think. Let's get that in. Um, Lots of shackles and various aerials and things which we can get in subsequently. Right. Um, there's some more yellow there on the quayside. 
and I noticed there's a um, bit of paraphernalia from the deck here. It's a sort of blue box there. Probably a hatch cover. Um, and well, I've got a small brush here. I think I'm going to step up this this dark shadowed area here of the key okay dark along that edge and there are some um, strakes along here, part of the structure. Just try and hint at them. They come along here. You don't have to do them like a draftsman because you won't be seeing them like that. There's sort of parts of it are more visible than others. emphasize that one a bit more actually they come here and also that yes this needs to be much more emphasized here this bit of the hull right okay The anchor, three prongs there, a little bit of boot structure there, I'm not sure what that is. Um, yes, and this is, this needs to be as well, the prow here has to be done. Right, that's better. Here we've got some of the railings and paraphernalia. These in the dock here, they're all blocks of stone. Gosh, I wonder how many years they've been there. Um, bits and pieces and railings here to get on the boat two portholes there some rails here um, Darken up this side of the wheelhouse. Help you read. Big black box on there. And we've got the sort of aerials and what have you, communication aerials, I imagine. 
the aerial here. I must catch that flag as well. We'll do that in a minute. Some aerial here. Various shackles on some of these cabling. No, let me think, what about those little cutting cutouts in the side of the hull here, gaping white, we don't want that. We're looking out onto the deck, so let's just dull them out a bit. Um, again, what else? This, uh, oh I know, there was here, there's a couple of um, like porter cabins, so we've got to get those in, get all sorts of paraphernalia on a quayside, like that, and this one here. A lot of sheds, a lot of fishermen store their tackle and gear perhaps. Railings coming along like this. I've got to put a flag on that ship as well. Um, it's just a little short, I've got to name it as well. Um, this one actually is called um, the Vital Spark, would you believe? So we probably put that in with gouache a bit later. Um, now, have I got enough depth there? I really would like to brighten up my... Um, my red, I'm not, I don't think that's as bright as well, the kind of red I want. Oh, I don't know though, a bit better. I brighten it up with a stiffer mixture perhaps. This is cadmium red. Oh yes, I think it's a little better. Yeah, let's go with that. Right, okay. And a bit redder here. Various boys and tackle here. Let's put a bit of um, dark under that. that shed. I think it's not grounded enough. I think it's on. More gear here. Some of these rails hit too. It's a bit too bright that, so leave that for the moment. So what can I do? Get something 
to represent what we've got there yet. I think that will do. That's all just a little dab of colour there. Spread it a little bit. There. Right. Now, is it dry enough for me to put in? Um, I've got enough paraphernalia on my boat on the quayside. I wonder. Oh yes, I've got the odd orange cone or cylinder or something. I can see. Let's uh, let's get something. In here, that's it. All these things lying around. Um, now let's think. Um, what have I done about my shadow? Have I got a sufficiently dark enough? in here. Let's big this up a little bit. Soften some of these edges. Bring it out here. Suggestions of our some of this structure and make sure that they're in line. You can see with those rails and areas. The wheelhouse here. And put that shape down like that. Um, now let's think. Oh, I know. I can see. We've got to have a life belt, haven't we? You can't have a boats without having a life belt ring. So let's, let's just uh, let's put one here. Okay, that'll do it. Um, a bit more colour in our flag as well. Okay. Hmm. I think I might leave it at that actually. Um, there's, there's lots I could do to uh, tie up on the detail. But uh, often less is more, as they say, and I think it's true. Okay, easy. Very easy to overwork your paintings. You want to keep it atmospheric. Um, which is good. There are some lines down here which are the uh, the plates actually, I think where they're just welded on, or riveted on, this old vessel no doubt, just hints of them. Um, now I could get, um, let's get some whites to give us a few highlights in various places. So I'll get my Chinese white, try and make a, a stiff mixture. Can make that up a little bit. Can 
pick out some highlights. Now, actually, the um, I just spied the wheelhouse. Of course, will give us. I think I need to put something in there to reflect that. And we can put some sparkles in our water as well. It'll dry brush. And I've got a little little highlights I could do on the anchor there. And a little bits on the strikers here. They are catching the light. I can notice that. And of course I should put some on the mast here. Just I say the light's coming and it is on this. Yes, we could put a little dab of light on our. I think that's the radar dome there. Um, oh, I tell you what, we haven't got. We have to put some cables in, don't we? We need to to do that as well. Let's put some lights along. There, catching it. And a little in the um, we've got various things in our water actually. And I've got to get the name on it at some point. And put a little bit here. Give me some light there. And so some of the stonework is catching some of the light here. on the key side there. Certainly those upper flags are catching it. Um, now how am I going to get in the... I need to get in the name. It's called the, uh, the Vital Spark. Oh, Vital Spark is that? Try enough. I wonder if I can hint at it. Let's have a go anyway. I can always lift this out. Um, some of my masks could do with a bit more. No, maybe not. Um, I've got a Bit on light on here, catching that. A few highlights make a difference, and um, but you can see a little bit through that light there, catching through on the deck. Um, right. I think I'm near to saying we're done. I say when you're struggling to think what to put in, it's probably a good idea to stop. Let's get a little bit of yellow in there. Represent our wheelhouse coming there. Right. Okay. Right. 
let's get back to that the name the vital spark or vital spark is this thin enough or not um, just going to see how I've got a really small brush which might be better Yes, I think I have. Got a little tiny brush here with a fairly stiff br uh, bristle on it. That might be a better one. If you compare the two, you see. Look at that. This one I think might be better because I want to keep it fairly readable. So. Get a stiff mixture of Chinese white. My God, enough. Let's go. Vital spark. Is that good, wet enough? Not sure. Don't want it to bleed. I think it's that black is fairly dry now. Let's go here. Um, little spark, I said, didn't I? R K right. I think we'll leave that as best efforts for the moment. Use this thin brush actually and give me a bit more of a highlight there. Um, let's put some little Yes. Right here. Um, now I'm going to get a bigger brush so I can, or old toothbrush, I think. So I can put some splatter on here. old toothbrush. So I'm going to uh, tap that on various colours and see if I can make it flick on a few yes that'll do it you see that folks uh, well, here we have the uh, finished painting. I've done quite a few uh, uh, differences or changes to the foreground. I've done some splattering with a bit of uh, different colours of my palette and the odd bits of white and put some sparkle in as well. And I've uh, put the rigging in a little bit better and also the uh, railings in the uh, on the dock there um, uh, and generally tightened up on a few features uh, but of course always remembering not to do too much i've got to stop before i overwork it but anyway let's get um, the tape off 
So we've got a bit of a cleaner edge, which gives you a little bit of a, a framing. Um, let's get this off. This is Aquafine um, Dalaroni paper, 140 pound in weight. So it's a good quality paper and I, I think it's probably worth going with better quality paper where you can. If there's something that really uh, tempts you to do some really good work, something you might want to keep. So uh, there we have it. This is the Vital Spark. I think it's up in Scotland on a sea lock. Uh, I've got the hills in the background there. Um, anyway, if you like what I'm doing here, you enjoyed this painting, please push the subscribe button and the like button. And that will encourage me to do some more, especially if you can leave a comment as well, if you like what I'm doing or you could suggest some things that you're interested in. Uh, I would um, be pleased to hear that. Anyway, thanks for watching.